We're going to begin our discussion of relative extrema, the way that's pronounced. And uh, it's called extrema because we're talking about either maximums or minimums, extreme points. So you'll hear, hear me refer to relative maximums or relative minimums, or if I don't know which it is, I'll say relative extrema. And uh, I've got the graph and, and the statement here kind of close together. Uh, a way that we'll do this, in fact, we'll do this problem at the end of all of these parts, a word problem where uh, uh, the statement is, in a 30-second commercial, when is the best time to present the sales message? So we're going to discuss that much later, but that's just time to be a uh, attention grabber that we can do things of that nature. Now, what you see below is not related to that statement of the graph that you see. Uh, I want to talk about these relative maximums, relative minimums, or in general relative extrema. And you can see in this little graph there's a, a hill and a valley, or a peak and a valley. There's a high spot and a low spot. Um, and the position that we see right here we call a relative maximum point. It's, a rel it's not a relative maximum, but it's a relative maximum point. Now, the reason it's called relative maximum is because in relation to the places around it, nearby it, it is highest. It's the maximum relative to positions close to it. But you can see places out here on the graph are much higher. So it's, no, we're not saying it's the highest or the maximum place on the graph, but relative to its position. Likewise, the position we see over here, it, we would call a relative minimum point. A relative minimum point. Now let's be a little more specific. Suppose, for instance, when we're talking about this relative maximum, Let's uh, drop down and suppose this position that we see right here is the position of C. That, that X value is C. Okay, so over here we would have a Y value, wouldn't we? There's the Y value. So the point we're referring to here has an X value of C, and the way we would calculate the Y value, we would put C into the Y value. So this position on the graph is called F of C. That's that Y value. Now, very specifically here, uh, here, here's the way we make statements about this. In this particular graph, we would say the value of F of C. So that's a Y value, and it's a number. The Y value of F of C is a relative Whoops, I'm sorry. A relative maximum. Okay. And it occurs well, and it occurs at the x value of c, at x equals c. And we might say this then, we might say that c comma f of c, so that's actually the point, is a relative maximum point. Let me reiterate to you, the y value is actually the relative maximum. The y value is that maximum place on the graph. Now, in a similar fashion, this position on the graph that I'm marking with that, that valley is associated with some x value we'll call d. And of course, that point also has a y value. And that y value we calculate by putting d into the function. So that y value is f of d. So this point, we could, the coordinates of this point would be an x value of d and a y value of f of d. That's the way we calculate it. So here it's important to recognize, maybe I can make this a little more clear, we would say the value, which is a y number, 
the value of um, f of d is a relative minimum. So it's the number that's the y value is the minimum. And it occurs at x equal d. And further we could say d comma f of d, now we're just referring to the point and not specific numbers, d comma f of d is a relative minimum point. Oops, relative minimum point. Now let's uh, let's look at another example here, just to to keep the thought going. If we had a graph that uh, maybe looked like this, and we've seen graphs that kind of look like this, wouldn't we? Then this position is a relative minimum point, a relative minimum. Point, but we would we would need to know the y value to know what the relative minimum is. Well, I'm really having a hard time writing for some reason. So, of course, it has some uh, x value, and then the corresponding y value, which would be this amount. At f, of, this is a if this is a graph of f of x. Then f of c, the y value, is the relative minimum. Now, here's really the, the in in what we did with increasing and decreasing functions. Uh, we've kind of set up what we're really trying to accomplish here, what we really want to notice. Uh, what I would tell you here, uh, and this is the thing to take to the bank, relative maximums or minimums of a function f of x can only occur at critical numbers at critical numbers of f prime of x and remember what critical numbers of f prime of x are those are the numbers of the values of x for which the derivative f prime of x is equal to zero or they're the values of x for which the derivative is undefined Oops, undefined. Now, in the first example, way up above, the a in the uh, the c and the d values of x were critical numbers. See, this ended up being a critical number, and this ended up being a critical number. Those are critical numbers. And the reason I know they're critical numbers is because the tangent lines at those two, the maximum point and the minimum point, the tangent lines are horizontal. And so that tells me the slope of the tangent lines is zero. That means f prime of c, pardon me, is equal to zero, and f prime of d is equal to zero. So we're, we're looking for a places where the derivative is zero. We might have a high point or a low point. Now, in the second example, you see, in this particular case, that uh, C value, C, is a critical number. And how can I tell by looking? Well, because when we have a point on a graph, remember, that means the derivative is undefined there. So F prime of C is undefined. And these are the same critical numbers that we use to find when a function was changing directions, going from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So this is a big deal about these critical numbers. That's, 
and, and so uh, again, let me em emphasize the, the deal that these relative maximums and minimums can only occur at critical numbers of the derivative. That is, when the derivative is either zero or when the derivative is undefined. Well, just to, to simplify the idea, I, I want you to think about what happens if um, if our function goes along. Let, let me just let me just kind of uh, get a little example here. Suppose this is the value x equals c. Okay. Suppose our function goes along. And it's increasing, 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 increasing. And then when x gets to, to the value c, it starts decreasing, 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 decreasing. And see, c is a critical number. It's a critical number. It's a place where we're seeing the change in direction of the function. So if we go from increasing and then we all of a sudden change to decreasing, it becomes clear that we have a relative maximum at a position like that. So what we might start doing is looking at critical numbers and seeing if we change from increasing to decreasing to see if we have a relative maximum. In a, in a similar fashion, suppose we found a critical number and this time we'll, we'll say it's a critical number. Okay, again, it's a critical number. Whoops, that was a critical number here. C is some critical number. That's really all I care about right now. Looks like it's the same place, but I'm just talking. And suppose we know uh, on the left side of C, the graph is decreasing. So it's going down. And then we know on the right side of C, the, the graph is increasing, you know, because that's a critical number is where we might change directions. Well, it becomes pretty clear, doesn't it, that if we're changing from decreasing to increasing, then that's a place that we would look for a relative minimum. So in the first case, a relative maximum, we change from increasing to decreasing. Okay, increasing to decreasing. In that case, we have a relative maximum. In the case that we go from decreasing to increasing, then we know that we have a relative minimum. And that sums up uh, the most important part of this section, and it's called the first derivative test. So uh, let me see if I have room to write that first derivative test down here. Okay, this is what it says. I'm going to uh, paraphrase it, try to put it more in layman's terms. The first derivative test. Okay, now um, here's what it says. Assume, well, C is a critical number. Oops, a critical number of the derivative f prime of x. Okay. So here's what we've got. Number one, if f prime of C changes from positive to negative, at C, then a relative maximum occurs at x equals c and its value is the y value 
uh, its value is f of c. I, I see as I'm, I was kind of thinking too much as I was writing, um, a relative maximum of, and I really should have said that, okay, a relative maximum of the function f of x. So before we get any further, let me under, let me make sure that uh, first we understand what this first derivative test is. This is a test using f prime of x to decide where relative maximums or relative minimums of f of x occur. Okay? Now, the derivative is being used to test the graph of the function, of the original function. And so we're talking about relative maximums on the graph of f, not the derivative. Okay, I want to make sure that that's absolutely clear. Okay, the second possibility, oh, and by the way, uh, this f prime changes from positive to negative. Well, of course, this would mean that uh, f prime, of course, if it's increasing, is positive up above. And f prime, if it's decreasing, is negative. And so that's the idea that we're changing from positive to negative, okay, for a relative maximum. Now, in the case of a relative minimum, we have the other change from negative to positive. So, if f prime of c changes from negative to positive, at the x value of c, then a relative minimum of f of x, a relative minimum of the function f of x occurs at x equals c. And its value is a y value, and it's whatever f of c is. Now, once again, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about the derivative. Now, remember, c is a critical number of f of the derivative. And this is the second graph. We're talking about the second graph up here, for instance. Uh, we're talking about the derivative changing from, and actually I shouldn't have said f prime of c in each of these cases. I should have said f prime of x. My bad. Okay. f prime of x. Okay, so uh, anyway, we're having the, we're looking at the derivative, and the derivative is changing from negative to positive. See, if the function, if the derivative is negative, okay, that means it's decreasing. So that's the situation we have in the in the second graph. And if it's changing, that is, if the derivative is changing to positive, then that means it changed the graph changed to increasing. So we're looking for changes in the sign of the derivative to decide whether we have a relative maximum or a minimum. And where we look at that, okay, so where we look is that we're looking for the change at the critical numbers. So that's really what we're doing here. We're using the derivative and looking for a change in the sign of the derivative so we see that we're changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa looking for the maximum or minimum. Once again, what we're doing is we're testing critical numbers. Okay, testing critical numbers. Now, if there's no change in the sign of the derivative, then we're continuing to increase or continuing to decrease. And we'll look at some specific examples here in the next part. This is the end of the introduction, and uh, we'll, we'll continue with some examples now.